On this Lord's Day evening, yes, on the 23rd of June 2019, I preach a further sermon in the series of sermons from the epistle or the letter of Jude. Jude, verse 8. Likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. We speak about these dreamers. These evil dreamers, we started speaking about them tonight, uh, last week. We continue today, this evening. We read, I read to you the verse, Psalm 39. Surely every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. But in contradistinction to the evil ones, verse 7, the godly ones, the righteous ones of God, the beloved of Jude's letter, and now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Those who walk about like a shadow, according to verse 6a of Psalm 39, they busy themselves in vain. They heap unto themselves riches, but they doesn't know. They do not know who will gather what they have gathered. They live in the hope of an uncertain future. They gather like robots because they live in a dream, and people living in a dream are not being realistic in the expectations and in the way they do things. It is absolute idiot, uh, idiocy and foolishness to heap up all kinds of riches, but not knowing who will gather them. So unrealistic they become that they gather up and they heap up riches not even thinking who will gather and who will reap, who will get those things after they will have died. In such a deep dream they find themselves. In such a deep dream they find themselves. I repeat, the, uh, but, but, but in contradistinction to that, the beloved that Jude addressed in his letter, were wide awake, and therefore they react like the man of Psalm 39, the righteous ones. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. <coughs> Verse 8, deliver me from all my transgressions. He wants to be the, delivered from his sins and his iniquities and his transgressions because he's preparing himself for the city of God. To enter the city of God, instead of gathering earthly riches and sinning by making the things that they gather to, their, to, to be their God, Mammon, the God of money, the God of material things, we gather righteousness by getting rid of our sins, overcoming them in the love of God and Christ, because we have a hope for the future. In our case, our hope is certain, as we find it in the book of Jude, in the letter of Jude, the hope of the Christians is a certain blessed hope that will not fail to 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 become true and it will not make the shame uh, Jude chapter uh, Jude verse 24 what is our future oh, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy <coughs> this is our hope and therefore we find it not only here in the, the doxology, we also find it in verse 20, verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Meaning the second coming. When Christ will have come in his second coming, and we will all, as it will happen, find ourselves in his presence before his judgment seat, the hope of the vain ones who have gathered and heaped unto themselves things because they serve the God of the material things, will 
have lost out forever because they will have continued to remain evil dreamers living in this bubble of I have my security in these earthly things. The same we find in the, and, and they will be confounded and they will be cast into hell and burned forever because the material things have been their God instead of the living God, as in the case of the righteous. And the beloved of the letter of Jude will be blessed forever. He will tell us, you have made me your God. I have been your God, not only in theory, but in practice, in reality. And you hoped in me, and you get, got rid of your sins, and you gathered the eternal spiritual Jews in order to be ready for my return. Come, beloved, and enter your eternal inheritance and remain in a love relationship with me forever. Interestingly enough, we find in the letter of Jude, before we read in verse 21b, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, then we will obtain mercy. Just prior to that, we read, keep yourselves in the love of God. For those of us who will continue to keep ourselves in the love of God, by remaining in Christ as our beloved one and in the heavenly Father according to his word, going on the narrow road that leads to heaven, leaning upon our beloved according to Song of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 5, we'll receive mercy from him and he will reward us. The others will be confounded, will be damned, will be tortured forever. So, the most dangerous thing is to remain an evil dreamer and to live in a dream, thinking that my security could be in my possessions. That's a very apt description. These dreamers. It's because they are dreaming, even as they go around in this world, that they will be confounded forever. We find the same in the case of the of, 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 of the rich of, of the rich man in that, that story whether it be a parable or not it's debatable but let's not debate that now let's just learn the lesson from the rich fool in contradistinction to Lazarus the rich man and Lazarus Luke chapter 12 Luke chapter 12 and verse 19 Luke chapter 12 and verse 19. And I will say to my soul, so, he already had a lot. The Lord Jesus, let's read from verse 16. Luke 12 and verse 16 and onwards. Then he, Jesus, spoke a parable to them. Okay, it's a parable. Saying, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. Verse 17, and he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Since I have no room to store my crops, I have gathered so much that I need greater barns. I'm, I need more storage, storage place. So he made a plan. Verse 18. So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And then after I will have gathered even more and I will have gathered into my barns all that I have gathered and harvested and all my treasured possessions. Verse 19, and I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink and be merry. Is that not also another apt and fitting description and picture of these evil dreamers? What, a, an, what an unrealistic dream. Dreaming during the daytime by, uh, in, in, in saying, now I have earned it, I have deserved it. I have now such a super abundance that I have gathered, that I have worked for so hard. I will be secure now for a very long time. And therefore I can tell my own soul, have a rest. You're secure because you have gathered so much. Nothing is further from the truth than that. That is living in a dream. And dream that comes from Satan with which he has scattered their minds and their hearts and their emotions. Let us not do the same. 
because we also read in verse 25 the following of Luke chapter 12 and which Luke okay okay now where, where do we find this 1619 yes okay in this case okay the previous case was a rich fool in this case he is the rich man and Lazarus Verse 19, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. He had more than enough. He had excess of everything good in the earthly sense. More than enough clothes, purple, linen, and food. Verse 20, but there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring, verse 21, to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. <coughs> Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. 22, so it was that the beggar died eventually as well, and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Lazarus went directly to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. 23, and being in torments in Hades, in Hades, in the abode of the dead, because hell, fire comes, comes later. It comes at the second coming of Christ. But already being in torment in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And then he wanted just to be relieved from his terrible thirst by a finger of Lazarus being tipped in water and coming to cool his tongue. He still regarded Lazarus as there for himself. Very rich people, many of them tend to be like that. That they want to gather, that they, they think that the others are there at my beck and call to do fulfill my purposes. Even in hell, he wanted Lazarus to be at his beck and call although he never helped Lazarus when he was in, in, in this present life. Such is, are the ways of the evil dreamers. They, for, they do not really believe what the Bible tells us. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You treated Lazarus badly. You were an egoist. You didn't give him anything. You didn't love God. You loved yourself. You loved your money. You lived at ease and in luxury. Now you expect to be served by God's beloved Lazarus. He used to be poor in this life. Now he's rich and he's in glory. In such dreams they live, they think they can live such egotistical lives, living for themselves, not giving to the others, not living for God, but even from the flames of Hades. They will want the children of God to serve them. Such idiots they are. In such dreams they live. Uh, but, but, but he said, I am tormented in this flame. Even Hades has a flame in which the but have been to, to uh, continue to be tormented. Definitely, they are still living. Can you believe it? He was still living in a dream. He has still not woken up because the lost person will never wake up. Because the Holy Spirit has left them and he still thought, God will give me some relief from my tortures here. He didn't mean it. Seriously, when he said, whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Verse 25, but then the answer came. But Abraham said, son, remember that in your... He called him son because he was a fellow Israelite. Although he was son of damnation. Son, remember that in your lifetime... Uh, 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 Abraham said that. Father Abraham that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things it is not an easy thing to be poor 
Not to have enough to have a, even a meager subsistence. And so oftentimes God does not give all these people riches and wealth and they battle to keep ends and to, 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 to keep ends met. But now the tables have totally turned. Everything has turned just around, totally around. You have received your good things for many years. But now, the time to reap eternally the bad things and the torches of eternal hell has arrived. But now, Lazarus is comforted and you are tormented. And then he started to try and get uh, Father Abraham to send somebody to his father's house. 28. For I have, I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. You see, the lost also has this thing that we call blood is thicker than water. They also do not want their beloved to, uh, family members to go to hell. In that sense, he was still a human being. <laughs> But then he had and the, the further bad news that is also not possible. Uh, verse 27, first his plea, I beg you therefore, Father, Father Abraham, that you would send him to my father's house. 26, for I have five brothers, that he might testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. And how did Abraham retort? How did he reply? Verse 29 tells us. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let, he, let, them, let them hear them. In other words, they have God's word. If somebody even would rise from the dead, it will not help. If they do not listen to the word, the Holy Spirit will not work in their lives. Verse 30. And he said, no, Father Abraham. Can you believe it? He rejected Father Abraham saying, Father Abraham saying, but if one goes to them for from the dead, they will repent, they will turn from their wicked ways and not end up in this eternal flames where I now suffer. Verse 30, 31, but he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one, no one, rise from the dead. Nobody ever got saved by seeing a miracle, a wonder or a sign. Only by listening to God's word and heeding to his word, repenting, turning away from your sin, his, the, the personal sins and coming to God in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us understand that people will think that we need to see a wonder from heaven and then people will believe apart from the word are also living in a bubble, living in an unrealistic dream. If we look at Revelation chapter 18 and verse 19, we see that these dreamers who have felt themselves so secure for so many years because they have had so many of the material things, it will be such a shock to them what is going to happen then. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 9, the kings of the earth who committed, committed fornication, sexual sins, and lived luxuriously with her, was weep and lament for her. When they see the smoke of her burning, verse 10, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. It will be as if they would not be able to believe it. It's just incredible. It's unbelievable. It's too, in this case, not too good to be true. This is too bad to be true. We've lived so luxuriously. Babylon was so wonderful. Now Babylon has fallen. Everything has been taken away. They will weep and lament. Alas, alas. That great city, that mighty city. For in one hour your judgment has come. You see, those who live in an evil dream, the shock will be so great that the Lord Jesus told us, I think in Matthew 24 or in some other prophecy, that 
Their hearts will fail them because the shock will be so great. Their money will be gone, their wealth will be gone, and judgment will have come within an hour, even less than an hour in many cases. Those who live in a dream now will get a rude awakening, although they will not wake up totally, because without the Holy Spirit you cannot. Can you believe it? Instead of repenting that Babylon has fallen and that their fornications and luxurious living could not continue, they lamented about the fact that they have lost everything. I totally believe that the vision, that the dream that John Bunyan had is realistic. He says he saw the people in hell and they wanted their gold and they wanted their sober. They were idolat being idolaters now, they will remain idolaters there. They will be wanting their gold and their silver and their possessions there because without the Holy Spirit, you cannot repent. And it will be too late to repent because they will have continued to be dreamers living in an unrealistic dream, never thinking that judgment and God's terrible damnation would come upon them. Now, let us now start speaking about some of the other dangers, the other dangers that God, even in the Old Testament, warned people against. Because these things cause people to fall into a deep sleep and they learn to dream these wicked dreams, these unrealistic dreams, these anti-realistic dreams by listening to the false ones. Deuteronomy chapter 13, listen from verse, verse 1. God told through Moses, the people of Israel, his elect people, if there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, there's two, and the sign or the wonder comes to pass, of which he spoke to you, saying, let us go after other gods. In other words, let us serve mammon. It's not really necessary to serve God. As the reprobates, the evil ones... Did in the case, did in the case of, yeah, I lost my thread now. So I won't be able to, to finish my sentence. But in any case, uh, okay, just as in the case of the book of Jude, these people were evil dreamers and they tell the others, you don't have to worry, don't listen to Jude, don't listen to these other so-called Christians, you don't have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can live a loose sexual life in promiscuity, God won't judge you, believe us, we have superior knowledge, do not listen to such people, let us serve him. You shall not, verse 3, listen to the words of that prophet. It's a command. You shall not, you may not listen, you're not allowed to listen to the words of such a prophet. Or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your souls. The beloved of the letter of Jude, and he called them, He's be the beloved of the Lord. He just called them beloved because they were not only the beloved of the Lord, of the Heavenly Father and of the Lord Jesus Christ, but also his beloved brothers and sisters and beloved brothers and sisters in Christ of one another and beloved children of the Heavenly Father going to the city of love, the true love in heaven, keeping themselves in the love of God, he says you sh have to prove that you love God, that you truly belong to the beloved group who have been saved and who are being kept for Jesus Christ by not listening to such evil dreams and such evil prophecies which are totally at odds and totally contrary to the word of God totally contrary 
to the word of God. Because such people God allows in order to test us. And this is what we find here. He says, let's go after other gods, let us serve them. That was actually what the reprobate ones told the Christians and the doubting ones in the church or churches that Jude continued to address and address in his letter. He said, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the following reason. There are many other reasons that could be cited because you will go astray. But the reason that he mentions here is for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And this is what the beloved that God addressed and that which are addressed in the letter epistle of Jude, in the letter of Jude, got tested with God's test, God's trial of their love. If you're going to start listening to these evil liars living in their own dreams and trying to get others to dream along in an unrealistic way, God won't punish you. You can live in uh, sexual immoral lives and so on and speaking good about it. You must prove in this one particular way that you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all yourself. Reject them and do not listen to them at all. And that's why he said early in the letter of Jude, you must earnestly contend, contend for the faith that once and for all was delivered to the saints. We must reject it with a hatred, the holy hatred for such lies coming from Satan, bringing people into a dream. If people are going to start listening to such people, they also fall into a dream. They list, learn to dream unrealistic dreams, anti-realistic dreams, by listening to such foolish dreams and such foolish prophecies. Now we find, let us also read now the, from the last book of the Old Testament, or the second last book, Zechariah verse 10. I read verse 1 as an introduction, and then I will read verse 2. Zechariah verse 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 1. Ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. The Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain. Grass in the field for everyone. Verse 2. For the idols speak delusion. The diviners envision lies. And tell false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore the people went their way like sheep. They are in trouble because there is no shepherd. And then verse 3, My anger is kindled against the shepherds, and I will punish the goat herds. For the Lord of hosts will visit his flock, the house of Judah, and will make them as his royal house in the battle. So God's punishment in his anger and holy wrath comes upon people who go to churches where the leaders, the so-called shepherds of the flock, speak idol idolatry and delusions. The diviners envision lies. They tell false dreams. They comfort, but they comfort in vain. Verse 2, C. They comfort in vain, and therefore the people went their way like sheep. In this case, not the sheep of the Lord, Jesus Christ, but like stupid sheep who have lost their way, meandering in all directions because they are in total trouble because there is no shepherd and they live in dreams and they don't know which way to go. Let us hearken to this lesson as Jude warned his people, the beloved of the Lord, to hearken to his word. Stay with God's word. And do not come with all these other nonsense dreams and things and falling into a deep sleep, making you unrealistic and God's wrath coming upon you as a result of this, as a, in con as a consequence of this. Let us now, let, let, let us skip all the rest because it takes longer than I thought again.
He's taking longer than I thought. Let's now turn to Second Peter chapter three, our second last, our second last scripture for tonight. Second Peter chapter three. Let us start with verse 1. The Apostle Peter said, Beloved, now I now write to you this second epistle, the second letter, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of a reminder, verse 2, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, verse 3, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts. That is also an exact description of the reprobates that have already from, 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 from eternity past been marked out for this eternal judgment that, that they, are, they, they were also scoffers walking according to their own lusts. That's exactly what they did. They loved their lusts and their sexual sins and so on so much that they did not see their way open to part with it because you either serve God and Christ or you serve mammon. And what did they say as they continued to walk according to their own lusts? Even according to the Apostle Peter, which said these things before it happened in the churches that Jude wrote to, verse, verse and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Doesn't that sound familiar? These scoffers continuing to work, to, 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 to walk according to their own lusts. They also mock and scoff today. What? You speak about a second coming. Ha, ha, ha. Do you know how old the world is, the earth is? And one generation after another has passed, and they have all thought that there would come a second coming, but everything is still remaining the same. It's one des 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 generation after the, the other. Ha, ha. Where's the promise of his coming? For since our forefathers fell asleep, all things continue as they used to be from the beginning of creation. But they fall into such evil dreams, unrealistic and anti-realistic dreams, because they are sinning willfully and purposefully. This we find in verse 5 of 2 Peter 3. For, because they willfully forget, they willfully, willfully forget, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth the, the, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water six by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water in other words they willfully f forget the history of the flood that God destroyed the people by the flood and they went straight into it, the eternal fires of Hades. They forget about it. That he's the God who repeats history. The only difference is next time he will destroy them and destroy everything upon the face of the earth. He will not do it by floods of water as in the case of the flood of Noah, of Noah's time. He will do it by fire. Verse 7, but the heavens said Peter, and the earth which are now preserved by the same word of God, are reserved for fire. Everything in this world, on this planet, is reserved for the consuming fire of God. It will be a physical fire. Everything upon the surface of this world, earth will burn away. And that will be the sign that God's wrath is the fire of his indignation and his anger that have come over the people, upon the people. Are now preserved, the, for, but the heavens and the earth, the seven, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But then he said, verse 8, Beloved, 
do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day verse 9 the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but he's long suffering toward us toward us meaning towards the elect towards the elect not willing that any of the elect should perish but that all should come to repentance God still has elect he's elect and therefore he will continue to speak so that all the elect whose names have been written into the Lamb's book of life from eternity past in eternity past therefore destined and foreordained to be cleansed by the blood of Christ and to receive eternal life and to become part of the bride of Christ can come to repentance interestingly enough he doesn't say he is long suffering towards all but long suffering towards us as the elect there are other elect that still have to come in that is the reason why Christ has not returned but definitely his, God's word says he will return and he, the earth will everything on the surface of this world will burn away verse 10 but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night he will come and surprise us in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up everything will be burnt up so those people who have continued to live in an evil dream they will lose everything and they will have built in vain it doesn't help you to live, live in a, an unrealistic and in an anti-realistic dream. It's going to bring sorrows forever. And you are building in vain. You have been gathering in vain and you continue to gather in vain. Verse 11. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, everything will be taken away, will be consumed. What manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct? and godliness verse 12 looking for and listen to this and hastening the coming of the day of god because of which the heavens will be dissolved being on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat verse 13 nevertheless nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells if we are correct, and I think we are, God is going, he's not going to finish with planet Earth. He's just going to let everything burn up in order to bring a new Earth on this planet and a new heavens in which righteousness will dwell. Does this sound more or less or exactly the same that, the, uh, uh, that, that Jude wrote about in his letter? looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, who will be there for, with him forever. He will make all things new. I think I will now refrain from going to the next passage, because that will take us quite some time. First Thessalonians 5. Quite a number of verses. Let us rather not do so. Let's reserve that for another time, maybe next time. Otherwise, the sermon is going to become excessively long again. But let us finally now return to the letter of Jude that we are preaching about from. Verse 8, Likewise also these dreamers, these unrealistic dreamers, defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. But do not forget verse 4, Verse 4 of the epistle of Jude, For certain men have crept in unnoticed, unawares, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Long ago in eternity past, God said, I do not only have a Lamb's book of life, in which those who will belong to me forever are, have been written down. I also have a book of wrath, in which those people who will not serve me and will not have served me in time and will have lived, lived and wasted their lives and mocked me and denied continue to deny the Lord Jesus Christ and continue to fool themselves living in their idle and wicked and anti-realistic dreams 
They have long ago been marked out for this condemnation, meaning for this eternal condemnation. But let us learn from it, and I repeat what I said last time. The only way for us to stay away from that, as far away from that condemnation as possible, is to continue making forward strides as we go, leaning upon our beloved higher and higher towards heaven, still cherishing the blessed hope of his return. Verse 10, verse 20. But you, beloved, the but is so important. In confident distinction to these people who are getting waxing worse and worse, going into their deep sleep and in their anti-realistic and unrealistic dreams, always deeper, but you, in contrast distinction to them, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith by studying the Word of God, meditating upon it, staying with the Word of God, praying in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit must continue to lead and guide us as we pray. Verse 21, keeping yourselves in the love of God as you are continue looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Let us do these things and continue to do them and in that way it will become increasingly evident and we will become we will receive more and more peace about this. We do not belong to the party of these evil dreamers. We are not living in a dream. We are living according to God's eternal dream, which is a realistic dream that he is going to fulfill and is busy fulfilling it. He has already sent his son back to heaven to go and prepare the places for us. According to John 14, and as he continues to prepare the place in which I have to live and you have to dwell forever in glory in order to serve him better there, he is preparing you and he's preparing me, and therefore he says, he's preparing his, uh, the bride of Christ, and therefore he says, we should prepare ourselves, being led by God for that, uh, to this effect. And, uh, yes, to this effect. And as we continue to do so, we must continue evangelizing. Verse 20, verses 22 and 3. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, a better translation maybe, in the case of those who doubt, show mercy to them. Verse 23, but others, save with fear, those who continue to serve, uh, to, 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 to listen more and more to these evil dreamers, others save with fear, pulling them, snatching them out of the fire. We read in the Old Testament, this is a brand that has been snatched out of the fire, plucked out of the fire before it became, became too late, because this log of fire a uh, lock of uh, wood uh, b became ashes, turned to ashes, being burnt and consumed by the fire. But you must continue to evangelize, hating the last part of verse 22, verse 23, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Stay so far away from sin that you do not even want to have anything to do with the garment in which the sinner has lived. Beloved, we must not come as near as possible to the abyss. We must stay away. Stay away. Stay away. Do let not a young or an old man who is unmarried or married and a young girl be alone anywhere because they're going to sin at some stage. Because they will think that they stand, take heed, otherwise you're going to fall. Stay clear from sin as far as possible. Do not come as near to it as possible, showing that you hate it with a holy hatred and you only love God and Christ and His precious commandments and His appearing and you love His appearing and therefore you prepare for that. Beloved, let us do that and we will not be sorry. In the contrary will become true. He will be so glad that we have hearkened to the voice of the eternal shepherd, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the chief shepherd, even by listening to his under shepherds as they preach the word of God, as he 
the Holy Spirit and Christ and God the Father expected the beloved of the letter of Jude of these, this church or these churches to take heed to what Jude as his servant wrote and to what the other apostles wrote yeah, the, the, the other men of God the other authors of scripture that's the only way sola scriptura but solar scripture becoming a living reality, taking us totally away from the danger of becoming unrealistic dreamers. Only dreaming the dream of the Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Their ideal, their intense longing and desire to take us and to bring us to themselves in the eternal heavens in our glorified bodies to enjoy them forever and for them to be able to enjoy us forever as we will serve him there in a much more wonderful way but let us understand these other people that these are, there are three groups as I've already said in this letter those who still doubted that, that those who still uh, that could still potentially get saved evangelize them but the second group is that beloved you are saved and show that you are saved and go on the narrow road with Christ until the very end in self denial and in righteous living according to his word but there's the third, third group those men who have been marked out for this condemnation long ago God wrote their names down had their names written down these people are beyond redemption those scoffers who laugh laugh and mock and make a joke and poke fun at Christ and the word of God do not speak to them about the love of God in Jesus Christ because the Lord Jesus warned us do not cast your pearls before swine they will turn around and they will trample you under their feet a mocker you're not supposed to speak to him about the love of God in Christ the apostle Paul did not do it the apostle the Jew did not do it the apostle Peter did not do it Philip the evangelist did not do it and Jude warned them he said we must contend for the faith and we must say these people are reprobates they have fallen away once and forever there is no hope of return for them but those of you who have come under the influence we need to win you to the Lord you will better hearken to the message of Jude and to our message from the word of God which is in total harmony and correspondence with the word of God before your hearts will have become hardened and before you will also have crossed the Rubicon and before you also will have been uh, will have proved to have been marked out from eternity past for this condemnation let us live life like that and the God of peace and the Christ of peace will be with us and eventually we will experience that our dream and hope our, uh, that, that blessed realistic dream will become true verse 24 now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless we saw this morning from Ephesians 5 verse 27 he will have a faultless and he will receive a spotless bride unto himself before the presence of his glory not with joy but with exceeding joy may God add his blessing to this word as he enables us to take heed to it Amen Heavenly Father, please speak to us, enable us to do, fulfill your will instead of participating in the evil ways of these unrealistic dreamers who have already been written down long ago for this eternal condemnation. Let us dream your eternal dream with you and go with you and with your son. Although we will suffer a lot, we will suffer for your sake and our, our t eternal riches will remain certain. But help us to snatch many brands from the fire and many, many to you who have not come fully under the influence of these reprobates. As God's people said, Amen. Amen.